three, two, one, zero. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to this week's The Demonologist UK live stream. I'm your host Damon Penny and tonight, tonight, tonight we have uh, been graced with paranormal celebrity. But until, until we get to that point, a few little pointers I want to point out. Don't forget we're still collecting from the National Autistic Society. I have two charity pages running now. Uh, the GoFundMe and the Facebook charity page. Both of them are available over there on my page. So just head over to the Demonologist uk on facebook check them out guys if you donate it's going to make a massive difference um i'm going to keep going until i get to the end of the fund until i get to the point that i want to raise to and we're going to go from there um autism is a massive thing that affects many many children you know it's had an impact on my life as well and i would really really like you guys just to head over there and stick a little donation in 25p 50p pound 10 pounds it'd be great um, massive shouts going out to Kathy and Ames who have already donated to the calls. Um, big shouts out to you. Now, also, don't forget, guys, the YouTube channel. Head. Oh, please don't tell me my mic's been muted the whole time I've been doing that. That's really embarrassing. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's Demonologist UK podcast. I'm your host, Damon Penny, and tonight we're joined by a paranormal celebrity. I do apologise for the technicals there. The mic decided to mute itself, but that's how we know we're live. Now, don't forget, guys, we're still collected for the National Autistic Society. If you want to donate, head over to my page. My page is as follows. Just below there, head over there. You'll find all the links there. Please donate, guys. It makes a massive, massive difference. Also, don't forget the YouTube channel. I'm on 31 subscribers. Once I hit 100, I'm going to be doing three ex exclusive videos over there, streamed live on YouTube, Demonology 101. It's worth going for. Um, this week's, we, we're, we're graced um, with a, an absolutely brilliant guest this week. Um, can't stress enough that you, you do not want to miss this one. It's going to be amazing. Um, so, yeah, we're going to get into the show. Uh, we've got a lot of things to talk about, a lot of things to get through. And yeah, so uh, let's welcome on tonight. Welcome, Karen. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Um, I'm now, I'm good now. The mic's working, and now everything's going right. Everything seems to have gone wrong tonight for me. So uh, yeah, <laughs> but it happens. Now. It happens. At least <laughs> that's when you know you're live. You have these problems. Can you do me a favour and send me those details about your um, fundraiser that you're doing, please? Of course, the, uh, can. Because actually, that's my that when I do work, obviously currently i don't because i'm isolating still but when i work i actually am a support worker with autistic adults so that's oh, really? what my day-to-day -day job is oh, so wicked. um i i definitely want to support you guys and if i can help you in any way i can give me a shout do let me know because obviously you know it's not just a job to me so if i can yeah, do anything no. please do let me know yeah, that'd be brilliant. I will pass them over to you after the show. That'd be great. I mean, I've been I've been raising money for a little while now. It's it's something that that means a lot to me raising money for the National Autistic Society. So, I me, mean, I just sort of push it as much as I can. But yeah, no, that'd be great. But Karen, I mean, wow, got you on the show. You're basically a paranormal celebrity. I know you Definitely might not think not. it. <laughs> I know you might not think it, but when you mention your name to a few people, they go, oh, yeah, yeah, I've heard of Karen. That's Festival of Light. Karen. Yeah, that's Karen. They go, oh, okay. So, you know, I feel graced to have you on tonight, and thank you very much for coming along and talking to me. You're welcome. I am definitely not a celebrity. You probably know me because I've got a big mouth. That's probably what they know me for. <laughs> 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 oh, don't worry. I get all that all the time. You know, I miss the controversy <laughs> me here on the show. It's all the time, all the time. <laughs> so let's start off. Let's start off with the basics. So what we do with the show, the first half an hour, we get to know you. We ask you a few questions about what you do within the paranormal. And in the second part of the show, we do have a little bit of fun, basically. But first part, 
I want to know how you got into the paranormal and where it all started for you. So I've been a medium for, for as long as I can remember, basically. Um, and it literally was a friend of mine that I went to circle with. His name's Dave. He's actually now part of my team. <laughs> right. um, and he said to me, you really need to come on an investigation. You don't know what you're missing. And I was like, oh, I don't know. He's like, yeah, you don't know what you're missing. Anyway, these tickets came available online, um, on Facebook Marketplace. And it was at a hotel literally five minutes from my house. I was like, what? I didn't even know they did that there. So right. <laughs> our friend Dave, he'd been on the guest, he'd been on the waiting list for six months to get a ticket. My husband come across these tickets on a car selling page, believe it or not. Really wow. weird. <laughs> that is weird. There were three tickets. So the three of us went along to this event. Um really, really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. The team is HD Paranormal, um, run by my lovely friend Jane. Jane right. Harris, um, and we literally, I think it was in a couple of weeks or something later, she put an, I started obviously following the page because I really enjoyed it, yeah. and um, she put an ad out for a new team member. Oh, so okay. I said to my husband, shall we apply for a laugh? Like, there's no way she's going to take us on. We told her we've never done this before. It was our <laughs> first time, blah, blah, blah. And then... Thank you very much, Mrs. Harris, which is what I call her all the time. Um, <laughs> I was part of her team for four years up until last year, literally. Um, at one point, I was running my own team and part of her team. Well, we were running our own team and part of her team. So okay. um, it's basically, and I tell everybody this, whenever I get asked this on an interview, I always say the same thing. If it wasn't for her taking a punt on us, we wouldn't be doing it now. It's quite simple. Yeah, but it, that that's the thing. People have to put their like their they have to sort of put some confidence in you, and it sort of pushes you in that direction. And I'll always be grateful. And you know, we're I might not be part of uh, we are not part of their team anymore, but we're still really good friends. So yeah, that's all that matters. Yeah, everyone preaches power unity, and it's, it's I hate the people that preach it but don't practice it. That's what it does me in. You know, these people that sit there and go, "Oh, it's all about power unity. It's all about doing this," and then the next thing. They'll be doing a live stream bitching about another team. You just think, oh, okay, okay, all talk. <laughs> okay, okay, we see how it is. <laughs> so, yeah, the, what I want to talk to you about really is the, the Festival of Light. I mean, it's it's an um, amazing thing. I managed to catch um, a couple of bits, uh, a couple of highlights, um, and, and the stuff you guys do. I mean, what was the idea behind that? Right. The Festival of Light. So, sorry. That's all right. Before. <laughs> Before um, being part of HD, I was mm. already organising events. Okay. My my events started out as psychic and holistic fairs. I had, did cyclist fairs, I did beauty fairs, and I did um, craft fairs. Oh, okay. Then obviously got into the paranormal. So I was like, right, okay. I love my craft stuff. I love the beauty stuff. I love the psychanalytic and now I love the paranormal. Let's just bring all this together yeah. and get all these different types of people in a room together. Oh, okay. Because you either have your psychanalytic events or you have your paranormal events. So I decided to bring all of my loves together in one room, in one event, basically. And so Supernatural Fairs was born. Um, mm -hmm. That's what I named it. Um, prior to that, we were refresh events. We've been a couple of different names because we've changed as the years have gone on, basically. Yeah. Um, we've been going now. We've been Festival of the Unexplained. I renamed and relaunched, rebranded January last year. Right. Um, so the actual event side of things, they've been going for three years. Mm. But like I said, we just rebranded and relaunched January last year and just changed the name and had a whole different concept. And yet again, I haven't got Jane to thank, but I've got Sire, her husband. He was the one that actually designed the logo for Festival of the Unexplained. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's quite a so cool bit of that's artwork. That's what he does actually. for a job. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that, I mean, I was, I'm, when when because me and you got talking because um, you had an event going on and you asked if I can uh, do a bit of promotion on the show, which we promoted it, and I mean, uh, the the artwork and it just looks like it's an idea that's fully like there. Do you know what I mean? It, does that make sense? Like, you, it's like an idea that's fully developed. It's ready to go. I mean, it. It's almost as if like it's a household name because I said to a few people, you know, oh yeah, well, I'm just doing a bit of advertising festival. Don't explain the, uh, and everyone was like, yeah, yeah, we've heard of that. It's, it's an idea, it's a concept that you've taken, and even though you've rebranded it, you still kept that sort of that 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 the, the core people were there as well, as well as it attracting new mm -hmm. ones. It's just a fully developed idea, and because when, when I first started doing paranormal investigations and that, we sort of went to these paranormal fairs. Mm -hmm. Um, because we was a team, and we was going to these parent. And you, like you said, you get one or two people. You get like the holistic, you know, the, the crystals and the sages and the, the wicca. Mm -hmm. And then you go to paranormal fair, and it's all paranormal teams, paranormal tech, mm -hmm. you know, locations. And you sort of combine that into one. Yeah. I mean, so it's all under one roof. So it's basically like the Swiss Army knife of of paranormal affairs. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it's basically I've brought all my passions together, yeah. and I and my background's like spiritualist churches. Yeah. So I used to go to spiritual. Obviously, the last twelve months I can't. But you know, spiritualist churches is, is where it all started for me. You know, I was going to a development circle, went to spiritualist churches, then got into the paranormal. I was still going to church. So you would not normally get people from church going to a paranormal event. No. So no. that's how I wanted, like I said, I wanted to bring everyone, that I'm, all my friends from church, I wanted to bring them to a paranormal event and show them that actually it's not all demons and witches and this and that and the other and whatever else you think it is yeah. come and find out basically so that's how it, it basically was born in the first place but like i said yeah we have we have storeholders we have exhibitors we have paranormal teams we have holistic therapies readers and then we have a load of speakers as well so you've got a little bit of everything for everyone really mm. yeah definitely i mean it's it's cool i mean i like i like I mean, I've done a few speeches of speeches. I've done a few like talks, uh, a couple of things before, and it's 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 a weird sort of vibe when you're up there talking and everyone's just listening to you. It's it, it, it does put you a little bit on edge. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, like like you were saying, yeah. like so was it SNC stuff that you was doing, Spiritualist Nationalist Church stuff that you was into? Yeah. Yeah, and you sort of brought that in because I know from the Spiritualist Nationalist Church, if you talk, tell them you're a paranormal investigator, they sort of go, Oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the exact face you get. That, that, is, that was like, kind of the reaction that I got, and I was like, Whoa, 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 hold up, right? Yeah. I'm one of the younger people that went to this church, and I was like, Come to one of my events, yeah, and meet the people that work my events, and then then decide yeah and we did have people from church that came along and they was like well oh, i didn't expect it to be like this and like, what what were you expecting this well i don't know because you've got <laughs> these paranormal people and actually um it was one of my first events and actually haunted antiques was there neil neil was there with all his old haunted antiques and stuff oh, and right. um and he came <laughs> he came to one and so one of the women from church was like well, I'm not sure about that one. She said, I'm not sure about that one. So I'll stay away from that one. She's, but I'll have a look at the other ones. <laughs> but that, yeah, was, yeah. that was the only one she was She was like, no, I'm no, not even going to attempt to walk to that one. When Neil turns up with all paranormal stuff, you sort of go, ooh, okay. Yeah. yeah, that was a step too far for her. But, you know, they came, they enjoyed it, and they've been to a lot of them ever since. So must be doing yeah. something right because they keep coming back. Yeah, we're, they're, they're like, we're going to stay away from that guy over there that's got a Chucky doll. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, a, a big shout out to Neil. I really, really like Neil. He's a quality guy. I mean, he's giving me a chance on here as well, which is absolutely great. Um, let's talk about, is it called Keep? Keep Inside yeah. the Paranormal. I had a look over there a little while ago. You guys do a lot of live streaming. Yeah, we um, don't do as much now we did start doing a little bit um 
but with Keep Paranormal, like I said, that's a, a whole separate company to Festival of the Unexplained. Yeah. So, like I said, you've got Keep Paranormal, which is a paranormal team. There's a few of us. We go out, do public events, do team shares and so on. Mm -hmm. And then I branched off last year and I set up Keep On Chatting. Yeah. Um, Because, you know, I like a good chat, me, as you can tell. <laughs> Never so, <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, why not do some interviews and stuff? We just started off as little little things. And then we've got another show starting next week. So by Tuesday next week, we have 12 shows. Wow. All different stuff. A bit similar yeah. to this, but it's all different, all different stuff. But we've got um, American shows as well. So oh, we're brilliant. not just UK audience. We've actually got American shows on for the american audience as well oh that's really really cool it's really cool because paranormal over there is a little bit more i don't want to sound too bad but it's, it's very embellished over there you know there's a there, you always have this argument between the americans and the english going oh well america's more haunted than england and then we sort of go no well england's more haunted because we're older than you are and they go yeah but we've got more of this it's crazy See, because... I, i've had the opposite have you? Everyone I've spoken to and everyone that's either done a show or been on a show or we've interviewed for any of the festivals, because obviously yeah. we took the festivals online last year. Yeah. For obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and actually, a lot of the guys are like, we, desperate, we are desperate to come to the UK. We are literally desperate because of the history yeah. of your country. We are desperate to come over there. I'm like, yeah, but we we all want to come over to you. And they're like, <laughs> yeah, so we'll just do swaps. I'll, I'll stop at your house for a week. You can stop at mine for a week. I said, happy days. Yeah, it's just <laughs> it's just crazy how people's opinions are different. Like we, I sit there and go, oh, I really want to go and, and visit Eastern State Penitentiary, and I want to go and Alcatraz and that. But then you talk to the, uh, the American guys, and they're like, oh, no, we want to come and do Edinburgh Vaults. We want to come and do a kelvin and hatch and all these sort of things it's it's mm -hmm. mad how like we we all have like the same opinions but like sort of cross lines almost it's just yeah it's just crazy but with keep keep paranormal is obviously your team yeah so do you guys sort of like are you looking to do more public events obviously when this covid's over you're going to sort of go out there and start doing the public events again well potentially yeah we um had quite a few events booked last year Mm. um which i moved to this year yeah. and then some of them i've had to move to next year <laughs> <laughs> it's just of, mad, isn't it? I, obviously last year i was booking this year yeah so we got our new events for this year and then we got last year's events as well so yeah some of the events have actually moved over to next year now and the same with the festivals as well we did have i think we had six booked for this year yeah. But um, I've moved some of those to next year, and we've only got one of those at Gloucester Guildhall in August. And then we've got our massive weekend event in September, which would be our first weekend festival that we've oh, done. Okay. Well, is that like a whole weekend sort of thing then? Yeah, literally. It's like Friday through to Sunday. We've got um, – like Friday we're taking um, all the public with all the celebrity guests – we're taking them on a day out and we're going to two historic locations. We've mm -hmm. got Penny Griffiths Morrigan, which is going to be um, our historian for the day. Oh, okay. Then we've got like live, we've got entertainment on the Friday night, obviously food in that. Um, got a seance. Yeah. Can't say much more what else we're doing because we've got a couple of things we're not announcing. We're just going to do them on the night. And well, then like Saturday, Sunday. Time. Yeah. It's all your exhibitors and all your um, speakers again. So you've got two days oh, okay. of exhibitors and speakers. And then Saturday oh. night, as Jolene likes to call it, we've got the shindig, as she's nicknamed it. So we've got oh, a live okay. band and we've got a DJ and we're putting food on for everybody as well. So wow. So, so they get to spend loads of they, so everybody who gets a paid for a weekend ticket. They get to spend the whole weekend, basically, with all these celebrities for, well, these people from the UK and America it's coming over as well. We've oh, got wow. booked. Well, that's crazy. So, yeah, Why didn't got... they have these sort of things going when I was starting up in the paranormal? We didn't have anything like this when I started up in the paranormal. It would have made it life a, lot, a hell of a lot easier for me because I would have learned a lot more about going through, like, you know, getting locked into 
fucking haunted prison cells and stuff like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, no. oh, we're, we're, we're really lucky. Like with the mm. guests that we've got and that coming, like we've got, like, I don't know, uh, Patty Negri from uh, um, Ghost Adventures. She's a psychic medium and good and good witch. Oh, She's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just trying to put yeah. the, name, the face of the name. Yeah, I remember her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, she's one of our guests. We've got wow. Miranda Young from Ghost Biker Explorations. Mm -hmm. We've got Sarah and Phil Wyman. Oh, no, um, Phil, yeah, Phil's a cool guy. Then we've got um, Chris, Brannon, and Mike from The Wrath Chasers from Haunted Towns, one of my favourite American shows. So obviously had to invite them. Yeah, um, yeah. And then, like, we've got um, Rob Thompson from the Ghost Finders and Daniel Class from the Ghost Finders. He also owns the Hinsdale House as well, which is a location in America that I really, really, really want to go to. And I have yeah. told him, like, a million times. <laughs> <laughs> I've been invited <laughs> to go. So I've got to go yeah. over there at some point or another. But, yeah. yeah we, well, we've... Once COVID disappears, you might, you might be able to go over there. <laughs> yeah. And hope we're all being well. September will go ahead. You know, we should be out of lockdown and everything by then. And yeah, I mean, and all that. Crossed. So fingers crossed. Looking forward to it. I know Jane Hart has just commented. She's got to, She's off to America. She said, of all the weekends that I have <laughs> arranged it for, she's actually going to be in America when the Wrath yeah. Chasers are going to be in the UK. She is not happy with me. Nah, she has told nah. me. <laughs> yeah, I can tell by her comment that she's really not happy. <laughs> Well, let me just do yeah, a quick so. roll call of everybody's there that's on track. So I like to do this little thing called a roll call where I get to shout everybody yeah, out. So sure. everyone gets their name mentions. So um, big shouts out to Gemma Oldfield, out to Jane, who's now missing out in September. Uh, you can blame uh, Karen for that. Um, <laughs> out to Jessica Bailey, David West. Who else we got on tonight? We have Yvonne Hunter. Out to Gary Fields, TV Spiritual Medium. Welcome along. Out to Wendy Lindsay. Uh, add to Lewis. Lewis had a, a, I think her name's Louise. I think it's pronounced Louise. She's going to be coming on the show in July. She's a grey witch. Really looking forward to that one. Um, cool. got to add to the, who else we got on? Patrick. I mean, it, it's, it's, it, we got quite a few people. I had to Mohammed Cade as well locked in. So going back over, I know we're sort of bouncing around, but going over to the back to the festival, festival of the unexplained. I mean, it, it's like I was saying to you, I wish we had things like this around when I was starting up because there's so much to learn. And I always believe the greatest way to teach somebody is the oldest way you teach somebody, which is through storytelling and listening to other people talk. I mean, so with the festival, the unexplained, when you have your talkers live, is it like sort of all different types of things, you know, everything from like sort of demonology all the way through to, you know, paranormal investigations and that. And do you, is it, do you just like cover a full range of stuff then? Yeah, it's all sorts. Um, we, like the last one we did, um, um, Penny Griffiths Morgan did a talk. So she was talking about um, obviously the history side of things. Because in um, so she did a history talk. We mm -hmm. had um, Craig and Matt, which came and did. Actually, theirs was quite. In, well, I missed it because I always I miss all the talks because I'm always running around like a crazy woman. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I literally, I never actually get to see any of the talks. Right. So we cover everything. They cover anything and everything. So for, uh, they have so we have someone talking about experiment. It's whatever they want to talk about. I never mm -hmm. tell them what they've got to talk about or yeah. whatever I expect their um, talk to be on. They get mm -hmm. free reign, whatever they like, basically. I'm like this is your hour slot, free reign. There you go. Just let me know what it is so I can put it on the flyer and that's how it goes so at least we just try and cover as much as possible basically mm. i mean and, and the the goal of the festival i explained the actual goal of it what 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 is the the goal of this is it sort of like you know build up the community or is it like you know spread information what was what when you started this what was the main goal you had focused the main thing for me was like I said, bring in all different genres of people that wouldn't normally sit in a room together to sit in a room together and learn something from each other. Mm. And, you know, we have I run we run a team, but we have actual other teams there. So we have other teams that have um, have stalls and stuff and come and talk about their experiences and come and teach people about different things and stuff. It's not um, 
actually our team don't ever actually do a talk or anything yeah. we we have other people come in and do that because we're giving those other people a platform rather than basically giving ourselves one yeah yeah so it's just like it's, it's just get people together have a bit of enjoyment together have some fun and whatever if you learn something fantastic if you make a new friend that day even better you know yeah I mean, every day is a school day at the end of the day. That's why you've got to look at it. I mean, I always yeah. say it's naive of people to sit there and say that they are experts and they are specialists when that implies you have nothing to learn. At the end of the day, you have spe specialist areas and you can be an expert in that area, but don't you can't imply that you haven't got anything to learn within the area that you're in. I mean, I'm a demonologist, but I wouldn't sit there and say that I know there is everything I need to know and I am, like, you know, top of my my class and like so i would never ever say that because every day is a school day and i think that's the great thing about the festival the unexplained is what people have to understand is is that it's like-minded people getting together and sharing information and learning from each other and i think that's the the thing that sort of makes me go wow because i had to learn for myself when i first started with my team and my demonology has all been learned from myself and talking to others i mean people realize that you guys they can come to these sort of festivals and learn and speak to like-minded people. I think it just, it, it just sort of blows the whole paranormal thing apart because people can just, just come and talk and, and learn and, and even down to stuff like um, investigation tactics and, and, you know, and talking about even bringing holistic things and the, the SNC stuff, like you said, getting them together. These paranormal people can mm -hmm. learn from them. They can learn from these paranormal people as well. If we can, because everybody's got the same goal in mind. We all want to get to the point where we, we're proving the existence of ghosts, something we all know that's true, but not everybody believes in. So if we can all yeah. use all the tools that are in our tool belt, if whether that's using holistic or using investigation tactics or using stuff that's taught in the SNC, if we can use, if you can get as many tools together as you can, it just makes your job a hell of a lot easier that that's my little rant anyway but <laughs> no. no but it's true that's why we did like the online ones yeah we did a couple we did three two online events last year we did um one this year all right we did one this year we won't i don't think we'll be doing another one um yeah. timing and everything else but the ones we did the online ones we did we did the first one we had all exhibitors throughout mm. the day and we had all the talks the interviews and all sorts of stuff and we did the same again the next time you know we have we were really really fortunate we had um a guide do a walk around gettysburg we had a live um live investigation from america we had a uk investigation from paracom you know we literally covered as much as we possibly could our first event was 20 hours our second event was supposed to be 36 turned into 41 <laughs> and the one we just finished I don't the one we've just done in january was yeah. for mental health in suicide yeah um, we did it for charity yeah, um, yeah it was, uh, men's mental health wasn't it like yeah, i remember yeah that, so yeah. for that one it was it's supposed to have been like 40 hours or something like that. it landed up being 51 in the end by the time we finished we started at seven o'clock on friday night and the dj finished at 11 o'clock on sunday night so wow. not only did you have all your talks and all all your rest of your stuff and all of that we also had a a, D, a live dj for two hours on the sunday night to finish off the event wow brilliant it's crazy um i've just got uh, jessica saying i've learned a lot from karen and co especially confidence i mean you, you obviously inspire a lot of people with what you do i mean it's, it's great to see and this is what i was saying about um you being that paranormal celebrity you, you do sort of inspire a lot of people um dave west says agree we're all learning in this field i mean everybody's learning and it's great to have somebody that's willing to sort of stick their neck on the line and sort of bring everybody together because that's what you're doing i mean when you first started this you must have thought to yourself oh, this could be a, a, a massive hit or it could be a massive miss or did you just go i, I like, didn't think anything oh. <laughs> all <laughs> guns are blazing <laughs> it was a is a case of that i set these i set these events up mm -hmm. and my my end goal was, like I said, get the people in the room together, and also I never, um, for, I never used to, I never, for the last three years, I've not actually charged 
entrance to any one of those festivals. Not one of them in three years. That's great. I mean, that's I've brilliant. run them that they cover their costs. Yeah. And that's yeah. how they've been run to cover cover their costs, and that's it for the last mm. three years. They literally, um, yeah, I've not even never pay, never charged an entry fee to any of the events in the last three years that I've done. Yeah, that is going to change this year because of, unfortunately costings and everything else is all going up especially with the fact that all these blooming venues are now all going up yeah and prices are changing so obviously the weekend event i can't do a weekend event for free <laughs> obviously <laughs> no, um, no, no not. but like our august event we're doing it in gloucester at gloucester guild hall that are just maximum would be, be a maximum cost to be like five pound that's not to too get bad. in to that event and events yeah. anybody's been to before we've had like i said we had the likes of like we've had people like jane harris there and jane's actually done it one of my festivals she has actually sat and done interviews for a tv network um wow. for a show that she was part of Crazy. she was actually she actually had the mayor's office because we had access to that so she had the mayor's office and she was actually conducting interviews <laughs> What? she said oh, do you mind if i was like yeah that's fine we can advertise it <laughs> so it's it, we've done all sorts of things like i said she's wow. been there interviewing people for a tv show <laughs> that's just mad to potentially be on a tv show so it is, this is crazy it is, it's really really cool like you said company it just shows that you do what you do because you love what you do do you know what i mean and i've, I've come across a lot of teams out there and a lot of people that we don't I don't charge for my services. There's lots of teams out there that don't charge for their services or, you know, they'll take people out on investigation for the bare minimum amount just to cover the cost. And that's when you know somebody's doing it for the love and not for the profit. It's definitely something I agree with when it comes to that. I mean, you've got to do it for the love at the end of the day. And I think that's what, Karen, I think that's what you do. Well, I hope so. Like I said, I, I, I do what I do because I enjoy it. And the festivals and stuff, don't get me wrong, they, they have been hard work. We've had a lot of help from a lot of different people over the time. <laughs> mm. You can't do everything Especially, yourself. Especially, uh, you know, you, you advertised it and stuff for us and promoted mm -hmm. our, our charity and everything. So, you know, it is it, it, it does take on everybody to come together and to help you out. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a collaboration, that. isn't it? It's a collaboration. Yeah. Um, Dave has just posted up. It's a nice one. He said, uh, Cameron is the most inspiring person. Dave, stop it. Stay quiet. <laughs> <laughs> you got some fans, Cameron. You got some fans. It's great. No, it's great to see. It's, it's great to see. Right. So, what we're going to do, um, okay. we're going to go into a short little ad break. I've got a couple of advertisements that I've got to put up. It's only a little video. And then when we come back on the other side, we're going to have a bit of fun. We're going to find out a little bit more about you, Cameron, and bit of you personally with the paranormal side of things. So, everybody that's watching, stay tuned and keep it locked because when we come back after the break, we're going to start the fun and games. So, I'll see you on the other side after this little advert break. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. I really do need to shorten that down a little bit. It's a bit Blair Witchy, don't you think, Karen? I think it's quite cool. <laughs> You're the first person to say that. Everyone normally goes, it's way too long. I like that. <laughs> no, I like that. 
Um, so, right, we're back on the other side. Uh, this is when I do me little bits on the show where um, I've got a couple of cool bits, actually, and they seem to be working really, really well. But um, we forgot to talk about the Haunted Magazine, didn't we? We did. Yeah. So this Haunted Magazine that you've got, is it, is it you that actually does all the writing for it? Is it or is it, oh, is God, you... no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, Haunted Magazine is Paul Stevenson and Andy Sawyer's yeah. um, magazine. It's been running for... It's now just brought... We've just had issue 29. It's just right. come out last week which is still available but i don't know if there's any left because they sold like you would not believe um it's online and it's in print so you okay. can order it um you can order it on the website it's a fantastic magazine and i was very very fortunate that paul and andy came to me last year um and things hadn't been great wasn't well and all the rest of it and Forget about all that rubbish anyway. We'll even talk about that. But yeah, <laughs> anyway. So um out of the blue, they came to me and they said, How would you feel if we offered you the opportunity of being an advertising executive for the magazine? Oh, okay. And I was like, Really? Seriously, oh, okay. you want me to do it? And they went, Yeah. I went, Okay, well, think about it. They said, well, just have a think about it and come back and let us know. And I don't need to think about it. The answer is yes. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, but you, you know, you're not well at the moment and, you know, and all the rest yeah. of it. And you've, you've got your own battles and stuff. So think about it and come back to us when there's nothing to think about. It. The answer is yes, definitely. When do I start? What do I need to do? <laughs> and it was literally. <laughs> so that was um, June last year. So I've been with them ever since. I absolutely love the magazine. I subscribe to it anyway. Yeah. So I've always read, I've, I've been reading it for a long time anyway. Um, and I just, it was just an opportunity that I I couldn't turn down. It was such, because they've never had an advertise, they've never had anyone in um, yeah. to do the advertising side of things or anything else. They do everything themselves. Like okay. Andy does all the graphics. Um, Paul does all the editorials. You know, they've got many different writers. People can, you know, people can submit articles and write for them. You don't have to be a writer. You don't have to be an author or anything else. But if okay. you've got a very, if you've got an interesting subject and you want to write about it and you submit it to them, there's a chance that it could land up in the magazine. Um, cool. So anyone can write for them. You don't have to be famous or, like I said, an author or anything. It's not yeah. like that. And yeah, I literally just sell the advertising space. So I handle that side of things. So I'm the one that's on Twitter all the time. Tend to use Twitter more than anything else with yeah. the magazine. And um, saying, like, email me. Yeah. I like, email me, Karen at hauntedmagazine.co.uk if you want to <laughs> get an ad in. Because you do different size ads and everything, like a quarter, a half, um, or a full page. Yeah. And you design it all for you. And it's really affordable. People okay. think blimey i bet it's expensive to advertise in that magazine i'm actually no it isn't expect i was shocked no disrespect to them and i was i was surprised and i said to them well what what are the costings you know yeah so they gave me all the details everything i needed to know to get started and i was like is all that is that it is that yeah. all you charge to advertise i said yeah oh. but that's and I just—I was very, very surprised because I've put ads in magazines and stuff before yeah. for different events and whatever. And yeah, when they said they gave me the list of the costs and stuff, I was like, "Wow, that's nuts!" It's like twenty-five quid a year to subscribe to it. Oh, okay, that's not that which isn't expensive either. I don't think. Oh, the amount of content. It's like two pound twenty, two pound ten pence a month. It's just crazy, like it's just like. It's, well, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad I'm talking to you, Karen, because I may have to uh, place an ad for my show in there myself. Now you've sold it to me. <laughs> Definitely. Like so, this issue we had, we put um, an ad in there for our um, mm. keep on chatting network thing. We okay. put an um, Andy, 
designed um, he, our poster and he designed our ad for Festival of the Unexplained. It's yeah. been a full page ad in this issue as well. Oh, um, he's an amazing, um, he, he, it's not expensive. He char obviously it's a separate charge for design, but I'm yeah. like, Andy, you don't charge enough. <laughs> I don't think he charges enough for his designs because I think I I might be biased, but I've always thought that his designs are fantastic. And yeah, you go to him with an idea, and he comes back in next to no time with the image. And I, what you did it that quick? It's and it's always spot on every yeah. single time. And not because I'm part of the magazine, it is spot on every time. If yeah. you've looked, if you've ever bought it, you'll know. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm going to check it out when I finish on the show. I'm going to check it out. I really am. I am going to check it out. And for all the listeners out there that are locked in, £25 for a yearly subscription is pittance compared to imagine how much knowledge you'll get from reading this magazine. So make sure you go and check that out. At the end of the show, Karen, I'm going to give you a chance to give everybody the link to that uh, when we do uh, one part of the show at the end. So we're going to get to that. And everyone, you know, everybody who's listening tonight, everybody's watching this back, I want you to go and check it out because it's definitely worth something that I'm going to check out at the end of the show anyway. Now, now we get into the fun part. Now, this is where we get to know you as a paranormal person. Oh. I've got a couple of things. Now, excuse the name of the parts of the show. Um, I named them and... Yeah, as you can tell, um, my head's are very twisted. So <laughs> let's get into it. Now, the first one we do a part of the show is called What's in Your Box? Now, I know that sounds really, really bad, but basically what it is, you're going out on investigation, right, to one of your favorite haunted locations. What three pieces of equipment will you take with you and the reason why? Uh it's funny, everyone has the same reaction when I ask them this. <laughs> because being the thing is with me, because I'm a medium as well, it's actually mm -hmm. my husband that takes all the kit. I've yeah. got a voice record a VP ten voice recorder that I take. Yeah. And that is literally probably the only thing you'll see me walking around with. Um okay. because I use myself, because I obviously I personally believe that you are your own instrument. But Oh, we pretty much uh, radio, spirit yeah. radio, because he builds them. So, yeah, I do like a spirit radio, <laughs> and I do like doing um, and also with the SP seven doing the Estes method as well. So that's something else. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of people have mentioned that. It seems to be coming back in because that was something that was brought back in Victorian time, the Estes method. And it seems to be doing like, um, because I always say that, you know, the whether it's a trend in the paranormal or fashion or whatever, it always does like a full circle. And I've heard a lot of teams that have been on here, they say, oh, yeah, we've been trying the Estes method. and It, it really, really works. And it's, it's, it's a really cool way of doing things because it sort of takes out all those other sort of, added elements to the atmosphere and it's funny you say as well like you as a medium you're yourself classing yourself as equipment because i had um a medium who's on here um last week sam and he said like he would take himself as a medium um as part of their equipment because it's something that people don't realize that being a medium it is like being an extra bit of equipment when you're out on investigation you know what i mean yeah, well, it, but you are, um, mm. as far as I'm concerned, you are. And like you say, I, personally for me, whether I was or whether I wasn't, I still think the same thing, that mm. a personal experience is more, means more to you than any EVP or anything else you'll get through a piece of equipment. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I, and I definitely agree with that. And I think also as well, people underestimate the fact of using your own senses to guide you in an investigation is something else that's completely underestimated by people as well. Yeah. And the thing is we're very fortunate because I'm um, like Gary that's in the comments and obviously in Jolene Jackson Lockwood, which is my partner in crime with festival of the unexplained <laughs> as I yeah. shall call her. <laughs> and also she's also part of keep paranormal. So 
us working together, we are one heck of a combination. Yeah. Um, we work so well together in so many different ways. Obviously, that's why we do the festival stuff together. Like, yeah. like I said, I used to do it on my own, but now Joe is also um, runs that with me. Yeah. And the same with Keep. We've got four four mediums on the team. Yeah. But we all work in our own different ways. So is it like but I don't always can't... work mediumship wise. Sometimes yeah. I just use kit and I don't if we're on a public event, I don't even use my mediumship a lot of the time because I want the people that are there, I want them to have an experience. I don't feel they're experiencing anything if I'm just telling them everything. What are they experiencing? They're just listening to me talk. That's so not, not an experience. Your, like, um, do you not use like your mediumship as sort of like without actually giving out information, just use it to sort of attract spirit to where mm -hmm. you're at at the time, but just obviously not say anything to anybody. It's almost like an auxiliary superpower sort of thing. Yeah, yeah I mean, about a couple Set of mediums. the intention, there, you know? pull them in. Yeah, yeah. So almost like um, what they call it, an um, electromagnetic pulse, but doing it mediumship wise instead of mm -hmm. doing it through a, a box or, or a machine. Uh, Gemma's saying, I like a bit of tech, but I also love using my own senses to pick up activities because your own senses I mean you can trust your own senses as well. That's another thing that we people don't realize. You can trust your own senses. You can trust in your own personal experiences. Uh, Dave's saying he's just bought a brand new uh, PSB7 to try it out. You should go have fun with that one. That'd be quite fun. Oh, the new one. Mm. I, see, I see a picture of that the other day and it looked really, really confusing to me if i'm honest with you <laughs> well i'll be interested uh he hasn't told me he's bought that i'll be ah, interested secrets. to uh, uh, see secrets secrets, secrets. <laughs> team secrets rude that is um yeah. that'd be cool to try out yeah no definitely Especially doing an estus method with it yeah do you guys have to let me know how it goes with that as well and tell, and tell me if it's better than the original sp7 i use that a fair few times when yeah, I used we're to actually both. Take them both and do a comparison. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, Jessica's also saying same. I love tech, but slowly learning my senses. It's, it's great. It's great to use your senses. So the three things you're going to be taking out with you will be yourself, your EVP recorder, and your SP7, which is great. It's great. I mean, that, every time I ask this question, people come up with like, completely different answers. It's great. But now I've got a new one, the new part of the show that oh. I brought in. This is called the this is called the paranormal dinner party. Now, it's another scenario-based one, so I bet, I bet you can gather what it is anyway. But, yeah, you are about to sit down and hold a Ouija dinner with three haunted guests, and they can be guests from anywhere, any time, any period. There's just one rule. They've got to be dead. So you've got to pick They've got to be people. dead. They have to be dead, yeah. No pressure. Yeah, so you can pick three people that you want to have a nice big dinner party with and have a chat with, but they have to be dead. Okay. I so, tell Princess Diana. Good choice. Definitely, that's a good one. But why? Why Why Princess Diana? Why? Because she was an absolute amazing woman and an icon to all women. Yeah, 100%. Agree with that. Um, so definitely, definitely 100% her. Yeah. Um, comes to mind i don't know why but this name came to mind even before princess diana i have no idea why but uh marilyn monroe i'd love to meet oh, her oh okay because okay. you know they, all these things about her and everything else um mm. but she was a she had the body of a normal woman yeah yeah okay so she was an inspiration okay she was this amazing icon in men would drool over themselves about her and everything else mm. but she was also a body image inspiration for women because she had curves yeah there's number obviously none of these are paranormal people but that's also another yeah no no this is the reason why i do it is to get to for people to get to know you as a person and the, and where you come from at the end of the day by adding the fact that they have to be dead that brings you back to the paranormal. <laughs> so, yeah. So I, I think everything in Prince Lisa, what the hell is she going to say next? <laughs> yeah. 
Well, it's, it's already an interesting dinner party so far, the fact that you'll have Princess Diana and Marilyn Monroe in the same room. See, I told you I like to bring different people together. Yeah. <laughs> so your you third choice. Your third choice. Um, and... Oh. Mm. I think now. <laughs> Those two straight away I thought of. Oh, yeah. God, I'd want them there. Uh, you said three. Yeah. Hmm. I really don't know. I've got that many that I. It's it's hard to choose because that there's a few others I think of. Hmm. Kathy uh, said only three that she would have. You know what? Three. And I'd have someone that wasn't famous. Right. And I'd actually have my dad. Oh, that'd be nice. That's quite cool, actually. I'd have my dad because he was absolutely my world. So mm. there's loads of other family members I'd have back, but if I had to choose only one of them, it would yeah. have to be my dad. Oh, that's that's nice. That's nice. It'd be a nice little sit down dinner party. You'll have, you know, a little bit of royalty there, so you can make sure all the cutlery's in the right place and all that sort of thing. And then have Marilyn. I used to work there. at the Silver Service Hotel. I know how to do it. It'd be oh, fine. See, see, you're fully prepared, Karen. You're fully prepared. I am. <laughs> and you have a little bit of diva going on there because you have Marilyn Monroe there doing a little diva act, and then you have got family there to make you feel comfortable. It's, it's that's that's a cool choice. I like them. I like them. That's a really cool choice. I really do like them. So yeah. I mean, I'm, this is something I'm going to do with everybody that comes on the show every week. I think it's great to get people thinking and for people to get to, to know the guests I have on the show, sort of as much as what they do in the paranormal, but a little bit personally as well. And I mean, Karen, you've been a, a, a fantastic guest tonight. I mean, everything you said, everything you've done in the paranormal world, like we salute you for the stuff you do, especially with the Festival of the Unexplained, bringing everybody together and, and, and allowing people to sort of learn from each other and bringing, like you said, people from different parts of the paranormal, bringing them all together, which brings me on to the last part of the show now, and something that's called the big plug. This is where I hand the show over to you, and you get a chance to advertise as much as you like, whatever uh, whatever stuff you've got coming up, whatever new issues in the magazine and that, um, any web links that you want to hand over, just shout them out now and let everybody know that's listening or is going to listen to this where they can go to find out about you. Okay, so um, there's so many things. So look, <laughs> Keep On Chatting Network, that's on Facebook. You can find mm -hmm. me over there. Actually, that's a bit of a lie. You won't find me over there because we have 12 shows, but I don't actually do a show. <laughs> um, Crazy. <laughs> I know. Don't ask. It's called I'm Too Busy With Other Stuff. I, I <laughs> pop up occasionally. Well, I'll yeah. pop up on there occasionally. So you've got Keep On Chatting Network. You can find me at Karen Frey, medium. Um, I think I'm a medium, a holistic therapist. I think it's, it is on my Facebook page now. I changed it a while ago, and I can't remember what I changed it to. I think that's what it is. <laughs> I'm uh, <out> of <laughs> it's good, isn't it? I'm good, and I? <laughs> good at this plug-in malarkey. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> then we've got Keep Paranormal Facebook page, and then we've got www.keepinsidetheparanormal.com co.uk mm -hmm. where you can go on there and buy your tickets for any events we've got we have definitely got confirmed 3rd of july shepton mallet it is going ahead because people keep inboxing me and asking me yes it is going ahead yeah. so there you go you know now um and then we have got other events throughout the year so go on the website or go on the facebook page and check that out mm -hmm. um haunted magazine www.hauntedmagazine.com yeah if you go everyone knows there's haunted magazine group there's facebook page and there is the website to pay for your subscription yeah um advertising if you want to advertise and you want some costumes from me then it's karen at haunted magazine so dot, dot co uk contact me there if you want to advertise mm -hmm. and then the big one the ultimate biggest event of the year which is the bosworth hall hotel spa hotel um festival of the unexplained weekend three days two evenings mm -hmm. uk and american guests 
and you get to spend the whole weekend with them. I know a lot of people comment in, I already got their tickets. I know a lot of them have. So yeah. if you're interested in tickets, then www.festivalofthexplained.com. Go on there, have a look. We are doing payment plans. We do not expect people to be able to pull money out of thin air with the current situation and the past 12 months. So mm -hmm. we are doing pay the three different payment plans. Um, you can either come for the three days and the two evenings, or you can just do the two evenings and just do the two days, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Or you can just come Saturday morning and stay till Sunday and do two days in one night. Or you can just do Saturday or Sunday. So if you don't have the finances to be able to do the whole weekend, we're not making you do stay over and do the whole weekend or even yeah. most of the weekend. If you just want to come for the day, you can also purchase the ticket just to come for the day. There'll be exhibitors, readers, therapists, and all your celebrity guests, obviously, as well, you'll have access to. Yeah. Well, there you go. Lay down there on you a go. plate. <laughs> I never <don't> remembered everything. <laughs> you got a very good memory. I couldn't remember all that stuff. I could just about remember when my show happens. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah guys if you are locked in and if you are watching back on this head over to them websites i'm going to stick them up one more again anything to do with keep paranormal whether it to be their events or whether it be the keep on chatting network it's available on their facebook page also head over to the website which is just below me and if you are a fan of the paranormal and you want to get involved in probably one of the biggest festivals that's going to happen this year head over to the website underneath festivaltheunexplained.com and go and get your tickets and like Karen said she's doing payment plans so if you can't afford it at this given point in time there's payment plans there for you but Karen let me just say thank you for coming on the show tonight I've really really enjoyed our chat that we've had tonight I feel enlightened and I'm definitely going to go and check that haunted magazine out and I will get in touch with you about some advertising as well because i think that might go down very well i think that might go down very well but once again thank you for being such a great guest on the show and don't forget to send me the information i will, I will not scrolling across the bottom there because i'll forget it by the time i cough <laughs> i will i will do i'll send you over the gofundme page and um I've, i'm still trying to work out how to use facebook charity thing it's so bloody confusing but i will get any there. help you need give me a shout if i can help you i will okie dokie Okie dokie. Well, everybody, I want to say once again, thanks to Karen uh, for coming on the show tonight. You've been an amazing guest, and um, I'll hopefully have you on the show again soon sometime. I'd love to come back. Thank you for yeah. having me. That's okay, and I'll speak to you soon, Karen. All right. You take uh, care. See you later. Bye-bye. So, everybody, that was Karen. I mean, I can't, can't say enough. I mean, as much as Karen says she's not a celebrity, she is a celebrity. Look at the guys she's rolling with. Look at the guys she's rolling with. So don't forget, head over to Festival of the Unexplained to get your tickets for that. And anything to do with Keep Paranormal, head over to their Facebook page. And don't forget to check out the Haunted Magazine as well. Um, well, it's been an absolutely brilliant show tonight. Don't forget, next week we have a special show. It is the UFO and Alien special. I am joined by guest Andy McGrillan next week, where we will be discussing UFO phenomena, aliens, and little green men. It's going to be a great show. Once again, thank you to everybody that's locked in tonight. One more quick roll call. Shouts out to Von Hunter, out to Gemma, out to Jessica, out to Jane. Shouts going out to David West, out to um, who else has been locked in tonight. We've got Wendy as well. I mean, out to Gary Fields. You guys have been amazing tonight. You guys have been absolutely amazing tonight, and I've felt the love. Don't forget to catch me here each and every Friday, 9 p.m. live on the HAPRC live feeds. And also, don't forget, if you can, please head over to my page. Let me just stick it up there in the banners. Head over to the page underneath me, facebook.com forward slash demonologist UK, to find how, how you help me to donate to the National Autistic Society so we can raise this money and get this rolling. So once again, I've been Damon Penny. This has been the Demonologist UK Live feed here on the haprc network and until next week take care goodbye and keep it spooky